there and welcome back so um, in automation whenever you need to click an element we all know that we need the locator of the element and for the practice what we do is we usually put the locator of the element in code something like this like the element locator and we write the xpath or the id of that element locator inside the code so the bad it, it is called a bad practice because um, if you check this if something so tomorrow if this element changes or goes off or some some uh, something is changed in this page then the xpath or the locator for this element would definitely change and in that case you would have to go ahead and modify your code which is really uh, not a good practice so the best way to manage your object repository is by using tables by using tables i would say like we use a, we have a we always manage a table in the database and wherein we'll put the locator name and the locator id the element locator and the page where it is used and by and we put the values here in that case when we want to if if some element changes so suppose the first element id changes then we don't have to modify the code we can directly come here in the database and modify this piece of id and so our test will again pass i can show you i, I will show you one of my um, object repository that i manage in my project is something like this wherein we have something called object name the object name is nothing but the name of the element the locator type the locator type is something like whether you how you want to locate the element it can be xpath id or css locator or any any locator that you would like to use and then the locator value the actual value how would you locate the element the page name so the page is actually this element is present on this page uh, if you are used in uh, web testing then you might have seen that some of the elements will be present in more than one pages but their locator changes so in order to use the same element but their page by their page name it makes them distinct like if i want to use the comment element and i want to call it on this page the comment element on the different page might have a different location locator so this way um, the page name is you should have the page name as well as the object name in order to identify an element uniquely and then this is an optional column that you can use which is which we call it an environment but i would recommend using this because probably in your application in your project there could be two or di different products that your company is making and so if you are automating two or uh, two or different uh, different types of modules so you can name the applications here in your modules uh, the modules here so you can identify that the username on this page for this module so this again makes it very distinct that element locator this is active indicator is just a boolean indicator which identifies whether your element is active or not so tomorrow if this password text box is gone from your page you can just make it inactive here or you can even delete it from this table but making inactive makes sense because you would have uh, you would if it comes again in future if it comes back you can make make it active you don't have to insert a new record here and the last column that we maintain is called the comment wherein we identify we tell what the element is used for and where the element will be present it's like a certain some information so this of uh, this structure of a table if you maintain and if uh, then this object repository is definitely very handy as well as very very efficient and in order to identify any element it becomes very easy now let's see a small code on how you can connect to the database so my um, object repository i stored into a mysql database if you are using the same then this is the very small set of code that you can incorporate in your automation framework and you can connect to the database and so this is this class is called connect to mysql database 
and it has certain variables which is called as the connection strings so this is the now this is my static function which is called the get mysql connection wherein so i have two different um, connections uh, do two different functions here this get mysql connection if someone calls this mysql connection then i have certain static connection string here mentioned in my code and then i connect to this connect uh, this particular database whatever is mentioned here and i return back the connection to this database now i have another function in this get mysql connection is get any mysql connection now this is very handy function why it's because um, this connection uh, this function can be used in a general way very general way so today if your connection uh, to the database is uh, not static suppose the database server name changes then here the user can directly pass the whatever you host name the server name the port name he wants to connect and can connect to the database so this is another very handy method we maintain both the methods because we usually need our test database and it doesn't change so we need a static connection and we call it directly like without passing any parameter to the function we we connect to the test database but during our execution if we require to connect to any other connection any other mysql database then we use this function wherein we provide our own host name and database connection string and we connect to that particular um, database so if you have these two methods then you do not need to modify your code at all in future because uh, you you can connect to any database using this uh, any mysql database using this code so i hope this was help, help, helpful for you and if you like my video then please 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 subscribe to my channel uh, thank you for watching and i'll i will show you in my future video how i use this connection class and how i use this object repository to to actually locate an element on uh, on a web page and how i use it in my framework automation framework